are narcissists possessed? Are they controlled by a demon or evil spirit? When you observe some of their behaviours, you could quite easily mistake them for being possessed by a demon or evil spirit. There is no way to prove if they are possessed, but there are certain traits that suggest that they could be. It's incredible how I can post a video and then so many people resonate with what I am saying. From all different parts of the world, it is as though everyone is having the exact same experience, witnessing the exact same things from the same people. That is enough to make someone believe that these narcissists are possessed. And then when you witness their narcissistic rage, there is so much uncontrollable anger. It makes you think that there must be a demon inside of them. Sometimes the narcissist will push and provoke you to get a reaction out of you. They do this so they can then point the finger at you and say that you're the problem. It helps them to maintain their false image, deflect their shame and shift the blame onto you. When I have experienced this from them, sometimes I have felt as though I am being possessed by a demon or evil spirit. It's like something else was taking control of my body and I didn't know what I was doing. Then afterwards, I couldn't remember anything that I did. It was as though the narcissist had transferred a demon or evil spirit onto me. I have experienced this several times, but each time it was temporary and then I would go back to normal. If there were any real demons or evil spirits involved, I guess I'm not a suitable container for them. But during those experiences, it did feel as though I was being possessed. And so I had lost control of my body, mind and soul. When you are being abused by the narcissist, you may react to the abuse that you are experiencing. You may scream or insult them, or even physically assault the narcissist. This is what narcissists often rely on, so that they can then abuse you without being held accountable for their actions. When you are reacting to their abuse, you may feel as though you are being possessed. You may feel as though you are acting out of character, doing things that you wouldn't normally do. I believe that the reason why this happens is because during that moment, we are in survival mode. This is something that narcissists are in all the time. We have a modern brain and a primal brain. Our modern brain or frontal cortex is responsible for problem solving, memory, language, judgment, impulse control and reasoning. Our primal brain is responsible for survival, drive and instinct. Most of the narcissist's brain power is devoted to surviving. When they experience a narcissistic injury, they are then purely in survival mode and doing everything they can to protect their fragile sense of self. This is why the narcissistic injury is followed with narcissistic rage. They have an underdeveloped thinking center which causes them to depend on the limbic system of their brain when they are recognizing a problem or responding. The limbic system is involved in emotion. The emotions that are more dominant in the narcissist's mind are fear and shame. They have a fear that their shame may be uncovered. They are ashamed of themselves. They are ashamed of their own existence. 
This shame was developed from their experiences in childhood where they were abused or neglected by their narcissistic parent. While they were experiencing this abuse or neglect, they were also receiving some form of, some form of praise or admiration. This praise or admiration may have been for their academic achievements or accomplishments in sports, or they may have been praised or admired by someone else, maybe the other parent. This is where they learned that there were two extremes of either being abused and neglected or being praised and admired. The praise and admiration was what they preferred, or at least just having some form of attention. It was better than being neglected. They want to be attended to. They want to feel as though they are worthy of praise and admiration. But deep down they don't really believe it. They don't really believe that they are deserving of privileges or special treatment. They still feel unworthy. They feel as though they are not deserving of respect or attention. It creates cognitive dissonance. Two conflicting beliefs in their mind. So now they are in a constant fight. They are in a constant struggle to prevent their feelings of worthlessness and insignificance. It's a never ending war that is going on in their minds. And whenever you are around them, they are projecting it onto you. They are trying to protect their feelings of shame with their grandiosity with their false, exaggerated sense of being impressive and imposing in appearance or style. Their false, exaggerated sense of superiority. They do whatever they can to protect it, to maintain this false, exaggerated sense of themselves. But then you come along and you start confronting them and it threatens their grandiosity, which is why they will then do whatever it takes to protect it. This is when you might observe their feelings of fear, which then turns into a rage, so you do not see the shame within them. They don't want you to see that, and they don't want to see it either. They have tried to bury it since childhood. But whenever you're around them, whenever you confront them, it keeps coming back up. They're trying to push it away so that they don't have to look at it. This is why people think that it is demonic. This is why they think that these are characteristics of demons or evil spirits. But our understanding of demons or evil spirits was developed before we had psychological terminology or the ability to do tests. Back then, they were just trying to make sense out of it. So they created these stories to try to understand it. I'm not saying that this doesn't mean that they're not demonically possessed. And I'm certainly not opposed to that suggestion. But at this time, we do not have enough evidence to confirm it. Narcissists are in survival mode. When they are confronting you, or when you are confronting them, they are fighting for their survival. Don't take it personally. It has nothing to do with you. They feel threatened and they are afraid that you might expose them. They are afraid that you might expose the shame that they have been trying to dodge their entire lives. Thank you for watching. I hope this video resonates with you. Please like, comment, share and subscribe. Click the bell icon to receive notifications for my future videos. 
If you would like to donate, my PayPal link is in the video description. Coaching inquiries, you can email me at nogsforevercoaching at gmail.com. Thank you for watching and I'll talk to you soon.